Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today, I appreciate it. Today we're gonna to be diving in depth and reviewing this tattoo machine from a company called Mummy. This is going to be the Mummy C1 tattoo machine. So if you've been curious about this machine, this video is gonna be good for you as we will be diving into the depths of this machine, testing out the performance, taking a close up look at it and everything in between that we can possibly do here in this video to help you determine if this machine is right for you. So with that being said, let's just dive right on into this. So first and foremost, for those who are familiar with me and my channel, I personally use pin style tattoo machines, uh, short pin style tattoo machines to be more specific. So this one is a bit outside the confines of what I typically use. However, I did want a machine that was powerful and of this style in my arsenal. Let me show you the box and then we'll take a look at the actual machine right here up close. And as you can see, it's a small box from a company called Mummy. Some of you may be familiar with this company and some of you may not be. As you can see, it's a very straightforward box right here. Very nice graphics as well. Let's take an inside look at what's under the hood right here. So as you can see right here, we have the content readily available to us. So right here is the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and place it all to the side. We have a cord right here, an RCA cord. And as you can see, this one's durable. I'm a big fan of the ultralights and also a big fan of durable as well. Me personally, I would go with durable over ultralight any day. Uh, it just depends, you know, to each their own, that's subjective. And we get a set of tools right here, as you can see. So we have some, it looks like rubber bands. We have some tools here and some grommets as well. So these are the contents as to what comes within the box. As you can see, nothing under the foam right there. So let's take a look at the actual machine itself. That is what comes within the Mummy C1 tattoo machine upon purchase. And this is the Mummy C1 itself right here. And as you can see, it comes within a nice felt bag. I do love that Mummy brands everything that they send you. And let's take a look at the actual machine right here. And right off the bat, what I am gonna say is that this machine right here is beautiful. This does have a bit of weight, and this is a more, I guess, um, I guess I'm gonna determine or classify as a traditional style tattoo machine, as it's not more of a short pin, as you can see. So this is the CNC X1 right here. That's typically the style of machine I'm used to. This one reminds me of more like old school coil or the more traditional style machine where you have this rod right here just going up and down. Um, as you can see, it is an RCA input as well. We're gonna take a first-hand look at everything and it is beautiful right off the bat. It has a nice amount of weight to it as well. It's not, it doesn't feel cheap at all. Let me show you the look all the way around. So as you can see, very nice. The mummy brand right there, the logo. And as you can see the back right here and it is RCA. Let me see if I can put the light a little bit more over to get a better look. And if I'm correct, this is going to be compatible with most grips on the market. We are gonna take a look at putting on multiple grips on this machine. So I wanted just to show you it up close. I wanted to unbox it with you all here. And the specifics, I am not going to get into all these specifics. I may mention them along the way. However, if you followed my YouTube channel and you're subscribed, you would know that I don't really jump into like the details and the specifics as I leave the links in the description below so you can check that out on your end. I more so put you in front of the product, let you see everything, let you hear it out, let you see the performance with me here in real time as well. Let me take you a look at the top. But as you can see though, um, this traditional design is not like anything that I've had. This is a different model completely over anything that I've ever used. So I'm very excited to test this one out. Overall though, I'm definitely liking this right here. I like this uh, specific grain felt or this grain look there as well. So overall though, this is seems like a nice solid machine right now. What I'm going to do is we're gonna test out different uh, grips. Maybe we're gonna test out see some disposables. I am going to test out the ink claw grip. I do have an ambition stainless steel grip. So we can go ahead and run through the grips and test that out just to kind of see how easy it is to assemble and disassemble. So I'm going to begin with this specific disposable right here. I'm just gonna apply it like that, like so. 
Uh, this is going to be compatible with barred needles, in which I'm going to demonstrate in this video, and it is compatible with cartridges as well. It just depends on the setup that you are going to be using. So I'm going to set it up right here with you all. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to grab out a rubber band as I'm going to use this to hold the needle down. And I'm going to grab a grommet as well. Place that back in there. So to begin, I'm going to grab this one right here. And this is going to be a nine round shader. So it's just a standard plastic tube, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, with these right here specific. So I'm just going to input it bar side down here. And I'm going to insert it here slowly. As you can see, and I'm kind of just going to let it fall into place down here, like so. And then from here, you would just apply it. What I like about this right here, the Mummy C1, is that it has a slit right here, which makes it super easy. So like... Technically, you can even put the needle on first on the grommet should you choose to do so. So I have the grommet on the needle and then I'm putting the needle onto the machine right here, like so. And as you can see, that little slit allows you to just simply slide the needle in there. And when I was uh, looking at it at first, I liked that feature a lot as it makes it much more easier to insert a needle and to set this up here. So I'm just gonna be careful here not to damage the needles. Now you can do it that way, but for this, I'm actually going to run the needle down to the grip like I did before, like that. And then I'm going to put the needle right here. And then from here, I'm going to just simply insert it like so. Very simple, very nice fit. And then I'm just going to put the grommet back on like so. And then from here, you can kind of adjust your depth accordingly. So for me specific, and I know this is a lot of plastic right here uh, coming off, but I'm just doing this for demonstration. So this may be a good depth right here. And that may happen, like uh, plastic shavings with the disposable tube, I would just wipe everything down with alcohol. Uh, me personally, I don't like to use these for tattooing. I have a stainless steel grip in which I'm also gonna demonstrate as well to push needle cartridges as opposed to barred needles. And as you can see though, we have this set up right here and we have an RCA input. So I'm going to get a wireless power supply. I'm just going to test that out just to see if it's, uh, you know, if it runs with the wireless power supply as well. So let's grab one and let's just test that out as well on camera here while we're going. So I have a wireless power supply right here in which I am going to turn on. I know this is kind of a ridiculous little setup, but it is what it is. So I'm going to put it like around 5.7 volts. And as you can see, RCA input, no problem. Now, I'm going to also get this rubber band right here, and I'm going to place this onto this right here to help hold the needle back. So you can hear it. This machine's pushing. So it is compatible with barred needles, as you can see. I'm gonna push this a little bit higher. So I, as you can see, it's pushing with ease. Nice and smooth with the wireless power supply right here. So this is very powerful. It does have a bit more vibration over what I'm typically used to. However, if I uh, wrap this with, you know, some more napkins and make a bigger grip, I'm sure that I can make through, you know? So as you can see though, it's running fine. We are at 4.8 volts. This may be better off with a uh, power supply that's, I mean, I'm sorry, a standard power supply so that way you don't have heavy 
power supply is weighing in this little unit or this little input down right here. But you can see how it runs and this is a barred needle and it runs smooth just fine. What I'm going to do is show you another setup here. So I, I just kind of want to show you the capabilities and the different setups that we can have with the Mummy C1 tattoo machine. So that was the that was a simple barred needle with a plastic grip there. The next one we're going to set up, we're going to try out the ink claw grip. It's an ink claw tattoo grip that we're going to try out next. Let me go ahead and get that out to show you all. All right, so again, that was the barred needle. I do have the power supply, the standard power supply set up with the cable that it came with. So we're just going to run that as well. So this is what I'm going to use for the duration of this video. Now, the next one is going to be the ink claw power supply and some of you may be familiar with it some of you may not be now here is the ink claw phoenix grip and this one is its own power supply as well so i can technically use this if i wanted to to tattoo the remainder of the video however we will get there when we're going we may use the ink claw we may use the ambition cartridge grip we will get there accordingly now for this right here as you can see pretty simple to slide in like so and then I can just tighten it. And then right here, I can leave it like so. Take this down to five volts. So as you can see, even with the uh, Ink Claw Phoenix car uh, needle cartridge, I'm sorry, the Ink Claw Phoenix grip, forgive me, you can see that it still pushes, no problem. For those who are a bit skeptical, we can even put a needle bar on this and check it out as well with an actual needle tip. Let's get that out so we can run that as well. So it's the same thing. As you can see, we have a barred needle and then we have a tip right here as well. It really all just depends on your setup. However, what I'm trying to show you all is that the machine is pretty much compatible with any setup that you're going to run for me, I personally love using needle cartridges as, as opposed to the traditional barred needle. That is going to be fully subjective. If you prefer a barred needle, you can use it with the Mummy C1. If you prefer a um, cartridge needle, then you can still use it with the Mummy C1. And as you can see, it's pretty much the exact same thing. You're just going to want to drop the needle down through the bar. Very simple. We apply the grommet and then continue accordingly. So as you can see, it definitely still pushes with no problems, no adversities or anything like that. Still very easy and intuitive here. That's much more appropriate as you can see. So it was my fault, I didn't put the rubber band on there, but as you can see, once you put it on there, it really makes all the difference. Oh, this is uh, the grip's lower battery here, as you can see. However, you get the idea. It's definitely pushing with the ink claw grip as well. I'm definitely going to charge this one up. Um, I will be making more videos using this right here for, if you're interested on the grip. However, let's continue with the Mummy C1 here. So that is with the ink claw. That's another barred needle right here with a needle tip here, as you can see. And the next one I'm going to test out with an Ambition... Uh, stainless steel cartridge grip. So we're going to get there accordingly right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and get there as we get there. Okay, so the stainless steel cartridge is from Ambition. I'm also gonna be doing a full in-depth review on this. So stay tuned with that. And I'm going to grab a bar there. And as you can see, this is a stainless steel grip for needle cartridges. And it is a bit heavy. So this is definitely going to add some weight to this specific setup. However, to each their own, that is again going to be fully subjective. You may be into that, you may not be. Now I'm going to just set it up as we normally would. And again, this is for needle cartridges, not barred needles. So here is the bar that's going to go right here, as you see. <clears throat> so how I'm going to set this up is I'm going to make sure everything is fastened prior. I'm going to input the Ambition stainless steel grip in here. And I'm going to fasten this like so, and then just set it up accordingly. 
very simple, very straightforward process. So we're right there. And now what I can do is also put this rubber band on. I don't know why I tend to forget about this. I guess because I don't set this sort of setup often. So there's little things that I will overlook. So we have the rubber band and everything on there. Let's put the power supply on. We're gonna insert a needle cartridge. And as you can see, this is the setup right here. <clears throat> and then you would adjust your needle depth as you would any other cartridge grip. Bear with me. Very easy, very straightforward. Me personally, I would go with this setup right here just so that way I can adjust my depth easier. And to me, I'm just much more used. Uh, I'm much more used to cartridges as opposed to the barred needles, and this allows me to not only adjust the depth on the fly, it allows me to adjust my needle configuration on the fly. To me, that's everything. But as you can see, this is super smooth. Right now, this setup right here, um, with the Ambition grip and the barred needles, is by far the smoothest setup. I'm not uncomfortable with the noise, and right now we are pushing at. 5.40 volts, 5.4 volts as you can see. So that's where we're at in terms of voltage right now. And that's what we are pushing. And it's smooth. So from here, what we can do is we can clear this. I'm gonna pull out a piece of silicone skin and let's jump into testing the performance out with this machine right here. Before we dive into the performance of testing out the different needles and how this machine pushes lines and packs and all that, wrapping is also very, very important to me. I wouldn't feel comfortable using my machine like this, just open. I mean, that's just me to each their own. Even though this is fully stainless steel and you can autoclave literally every component within this grip, I'm still, I want to wrap it. I want a barrier around my machine. So me for this, I'm just going to use a simple saran wrap. I'm not going to make it complicated. I don't want to use like a, a Ziploc bag or anything like that either as I don't feel that that look is uh, sufficient. I just don't want a sandwich bag around my machine. So I'm going to use a saran wrap. And I know to some that may be a little bit contradicting because this is essentially what saran wrap is. However, for me, the cling wrap just hits home and makes more sense to me. So that's why I use a cling wrap. But again, that's fully subjective. You can literally use whatever you want to put a barrier around your machine. I kind of feel as long as that practice is implemented in terms of putting barriers around your machine, I think we're all good. So I'm going to just try and get it as high as I can here without actually covering this component right here. I'm sure you can probably get a saran wrap and put it around there. However, this is the main part that I am focused on. Uh, this area right here is my only true concern. Now let me make a hole per usual so we can get space into the cartridge. As you can see, very straightforward. Still goes, still works. And now we have a plastic barrier fully around the grip right here. And if you wanted me personally, I don't feel comfortable putting like plastic, especially a clean grip right here because I don't want it to interfere with this aspect, but some may still cover it. I'm pretty sure some people out there would be bold enough to just still cover it like that. You could probably do that. Me, again, me personally, I don't feel comfortable putting a plastic barrier over it while the machine is running. But this is just something that I also want to touch base on, on wrapping these sort of machines up. Me, I'd probably go about it this way, like this. As you can see, and let me just test it out. So for now, I can leave it like that, as you can see. So now I have a full barrier around my machine. I can use those blue wraps, to cover my clip cord. I am ready to rock. I feel confident with this barrier. I'm not gonna put any uh, wrap on it right now as I'm just going to demonstrate and the grip is big enough for me. So that's how I would wrap it. Something I feel is very important. I always want to touch base on. I think in every review video as well, I show you all how I would kind of just go about wrapping it on the fly real quick. To some, it may be ugly. However, it's definitely gonna get the job done, easy to maintain, cost-effective as well. Um, if it ain't broken, don't fix it.
All right, so I have a small piece of silicone's uh, real skin here, as you all can see. Some of you may be familiar with this, some of you may not be. I will leave links in the description below so you can check this out on your end. It's a flawless, it's a great practice skin. I love it. I've, it's grown on me over the time. Check it out. Right now, what we are going to do is we're going to pull some lines. So I'm very excited for me. I'm going to pull some lines with multiple configurations. I kind of want to just test out some stippling and kind of just test out the essentials that I use in my everyday tattooing. Again, such as lining, stippling, uh, a little bit of maybe some dot work and all of the above and some packing as well for us. So I'm going to bring us up close here so that we can get an up close look at the performance of this machine. So here we are up close. I'm going to start with a quill 11 round liner and we're gonna pull some lines with that needle configuration and we're just gonna work our way up until we kind of just get the point. So we're still gonna be running at the 5.4 volts and I'm gonna go ahead and pull some lines right here with you all so we can test it out. Now this setup is a bit different over what I'm normally used to carrying, however, Kind of still feels the same in a way. I'm still gonna approach it the exact same way as I would with the short pin style tattoo machine. And I'm gonna kind of compare it off to that here. So for the first time of pulling a line with this sort of tattoo machine, because this is essentially my first time ever trying out this machine with you all here in real time. Um, it is taking me a bit of getting used to. As you can see though, we're getting a really nice saturated lines there. So let me actually see if I can pick this up to 5.5. Try this again then. It feels smooth, it feels nice. Um, there is a nice amount of give, which is what I'm used to. And again, if you've heard me talk about my preference, I, I prefer to have give in, in my machine, but it still feels like a nice direct hit there. I'm not sure if that's like the style, the traditional style machine working with the more modern needle cartridges. However, as you can see, I'm able to get nice, smooth, one pass saturated lines with the Mummy C1, no problem. And it's running right through my reference here, no issues whatsoever. As you can see, very, very nice. Like right now, I'm happy with the performance because I'm not getting any choppy lines. I ran out of ink there, but as you can see though, I'm getting nice saturated lines here. And this is the Quill 11 round liner. The uh, style of machine is much more heavier over what I'm typically used to. That's one of the only adverse things that I am noticing off the bat right now. However, oh, and the vibration as well, but that's probably due to me not putting a wrap and that's me probably being straight on the steel here. So that probably contributes as well. Have I chose to wrap it, it wouldn't feel like that. And I'm pretty sure it wouldn't. very nice though overall the way that it pulls lines with the round liners is great i i am a fan of how this machine pulls lines with the round liner as you can see very nice smooth saturated lines what i'm going to do next here is i'm going to switch this needle configuration out for a smaller needle configuration and we're going to go ahead and just try some stippling i'm going to drop this into the lower voltage range to see what type of results we can get so here we are, I dropped the voltage down to four volts even. As you can see, we are pushing at four volts. I'm going to use four volts for stippling. And I'm going to see how this machine performs in terms of stippling here. Instead of match hand speed with voltage, 
But as you can see though, we are getting that nice peppered dot approach at four volts even. And I'm putting in a little to no effort. And this is just straight black. So very nice in terms of dot work as well. It's capable of that. Just using the very tip of my needle. Very smooth though. It's so I am confident that even if I was using this machine, I'd still be able to line as you can see, and I'd still be able to do stipple shading and some dot work as well. No issues, it really comes down to the personal application. But in terms of being able to drop to the lower voltage range and do some dot work, simple work, the Mummy C1 definitely does that as well. What I would like to do next is I would like to jump into a round mag of some sort so that way we can pack some black to see how this machine packs as well. So right here, we're pushing a CNC. If I'm correct, this is going to be an 11 round mag. Don't quote me. We're pushing at five volts even. The Mummy C1 still pushing like a champ here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just see how I can pack black with this machine here. Running at this low in the voltage range. So after just a quick little test there, that's, that's actually, not bad. I'm going to take my voltage up to 5.2 though. And move my hand just a little bit faster. So this is definitely capable of packing black as well. And again, a lot of this comes down to personal application. Me, I'm just testing the performance, just some essentials here, just some quick demonstration. If you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, you'll see me using these machines more and more elaborate tattoos. So be sure to do that as I will be bringing more videos for you all. And I do appreciate your support. But as you can see off the bat right there, it is definitely capable of packing and with ease at that. So it is capable of pushing larger configurations such as this one as you see. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I want to get a round shader and just kind of use that round shader as a uh, another demonstration here because I feel round shaders to me are truly important. So allow me to grab a round shader. We will come back and see how the Mummy C1 pushes bigger configurations of such. So now we're going to be pushing, I believe, a 13 round shader from Big Wasp right here. And we're going to see how this pushes bigger round shader configurations. Overall, though, I'm, I'm liking the overall feel of this machine. It's definitely take, going to take me some getting used to as I come from a short pin style background. I think what I'm going to be getting used to more is the voltages more so, like what voltage is perfect for me and lining and kind of just as I started when I first started it took me some time to tune my settings like find my voltage for lining find my voltage for shading etc so I'm just kind of have to rebuild those blocks again with this machine right here but as you can see just quick little demos here the mummy c1 pushes and it performs so it's definitely not a bad machine here but as you can see though, the Mummy C1 is definitely pushing and is definitely performing. Capable of pushing round shaders, capable of pushing round liners, capable of stippling, dot work, uh, capable of packing black. So some essentials there as you can see. And this is just me having fun with it all. 
Overall though, I'm definitely liking the way that this machine performs. Um, it is an all around good machine. And again, this is the Mummy C1 tattoo machine. So overall, yet again, this is an overall and all around great machine right here. It's definitely capable of doing some of my bare bone essentials, such as lining with round liners, uh, stippling with three round liners right here, getting that dot work, some uh, pepper textures as well. Packing black was with ease and as well as round shaders as well. All of that was with ease. I mean, you saw everything throughout the video. There was really no adversities, nothing like that. Again, the only adverse thing that I did notice was the setup, uh, how heavy it was. But that has nothing to do with the machine itself and everything to do with the grip that I chose to use for this setup. However, let's say if I chose to go with uh, plastic disposable grips for cartridges, that may be much more efficient and that may be much more ideal. However, I'm working with what I have right now and still I'm very, very happy with this setup right here. I do love the fact that I can autoclave all of this, but the machine, let me go ahead and give you all my opinion. Overall, this is a great machine. This is a well-rounded machine right here. And let's say if you're not a fan of pen style tattoo machines, and let's just say you don't want to go to a pen style tattoo machine because you're more of a traditional traditional style, maybe even coil background. I highly recommend checking this one out. This one's definitely worth it. Um, this one is definitely worth the investment as well as it does perform in multiple fronts as well. Um, you know, some machines are tailored to just doing specific things. I really don't feel that way about this one. Again, as I stated, I feel that this one's a all around well-rounded tattoo machine. If you're trying to line, shade, um, whatever it is that you're trying to do, this machine can do it for you. It is compatible with bar needles as well as cartridge needles as I showed you all here within this video. So that's also another plus. So for those reasons, I definitely give this machine a thumbs up and a five stars because of that. I have no complaints about it and the aesthetics of the machine, the way that the machine looks and the build of it is of quality. And that also contributes to the way that I feel about the machine. Uh, easy to use, easy to maintain. As you can see right here though, all around great machine. I think Mummy did a great job with creating this machine. Not to mention there are multiple colors that you can get and all of them are unique to their own. So I do highly recommend that you check out this machine right here on your end. I will also leave links in the description below for you so you can go ahead and check it out. Should I not have touched base on anything specific throughout this video or if you have any questions that you may have wanted to know at some point throughout this video that you may have saw, by all means, drop it in the comments below and I'm going to do my best to assist you into the best possible direction. If you're not, I do have social medias all under the same name at Daniel Yuck under D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. Daniel Yuck, I would appreciate your support. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I will be bringing you more videos like this. Yet again, thank you for tuning in and y'all have a great day.